I'm okay, John. Um, last week you told us you didn't expect to drop off in the passing game because Watson was a great quarterback playing great. How much of QT and Hanson's performance was Watson? How much was them? And can those two guys keep it up against the Bears? Well, John, I hope so. You know, uh, you know, any, anytime somebody's got to throw the ball, somebody's got to catch the ball. And then they had to be on the same page, uh, find the open spot in the zone or somebody's got to beat man-to-man coverage and the quarterback has got to anticipate uh, and then make the throw. And, and so, you know, they have to work together to make it successful. And so hopefully uh, that will continue, you know. Uh, I mean, I think we all know what Watson brings to the table. And now then when you put new guys in with him and he's still bringing that to the table, I think that says a lot about him. And then it says something about the guys, the new guys who are in there and who are operating with him, you know. So um, I, I'm expecting it to continue, and I'm looking for it to continue. Hey, Romeo, uh, you watched Terrell Adams as a backup, uh, and he had bounced around. Now he's taking advantage of this opportunity. When, when you promoted him to replace McKinney, did you have any idea he's going to be able to play well enough to lead the NFL in tackles? Well, that's that's a tough one, John. Uh, I'm glad that he is leading the NFL in tackles. Um, and, you know, when you don't get to see a guy in the games as much, you really sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. Um, but he's in there and he's producing. And he's running to the ball. He's making tackles. And in, in the cocoon that I live in, John, I didn't even know he was leading the NFL in tackles. And that's a... Uh, that, that's pretty good for him. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Romeo. Hello. When teams make big decisions like trading up to draft a quarterback. Um, organizationally, how much is that something where everybody's got to really obviously be on board with it? Just your thoughts on kind of what went into when you guys drafted Deshaun and, and made that trade and Rick uh, you made that move? Well, I, I think you know, draft choices are a commodity. And then when you're thinking about moving up, you got to give up something to move up. Uh, and you have to feel good about the person you're moving up for. Uh, you know, he has to have shown you uh, through the meetings, through the workouts, through his play in college, that he's worth making that move for. Uh, and, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, when... I think history will tell you that when you look at first round draft choices at the quarterback position, all right, 50% of them don't make it, you know, so you have to do your homework and then somebody has to have a, a good genuine feel about the guy's ability, about his personnel, personality, how he's going to fit in the organization and all of those things kind of go into it before you make that move. Sounds like you like the pick. I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm glad we got him. Hey, Mark, Mark Berman. Romeo, I know it's procedural, but how tough is it to tell a kid like Chad after a game that he had, he's going to revert back to the practice squad? Well, that's part of this business that, that we live in. And I think that they understand that and they know that. Um, probably, you know, he doesn't like that possibility, but he had an opportunity to to show what he could do. And, and the NFL world saw what he could do. And so he has to take uh, some kind of solace in the fact that he produced in a game, you know, uh, and he's working with a top-ranked quarterback and, and can produce. And so I think you, he has to feel like going forward that will bode him well. John. Romeo, your game against the Bears features the two worst running teams in the NFL. We know your run defense has improved. But where do you stand right now in your running game? And when you guys go into a game, what are you trying to achieve since you've struggled so much? Well, we haven't achieved enough. Uh, but what we have to look at is what the opponent is doing, who the opponent has playing the run, 
how they play it, what we have, how we uh, intend to try to attack them, and then try to come up with the best mode or best method to try to get that done. Now, with that being said, sometimes what you think is the best and what you think will work, you get into the game and it's not working the way you wanted it to work, you know? Uh, and, and so sometimes you kind of back away from it, particularly if, if you got the quarterback that we have who can throw the ball pretty good, who can get out of trouble and, and run. And so then you rely more on him. And, and that's kind of what we've been doing. Romeo, do you worry, considering the way you lost the, against the Colts, that that loss could linger? And as the coach, what do you do to make sure it doesn't? Well, you know what? I, I, I think that I, I started with after the game, John, and I told them to hold their heads up, uh, that I was proud of the way they played because they had a will to win and they displayed it in the game. Uh, and, and one play doesn't define an individual or doesn't define a team. And, and then this morning, I showed them one play from the Pittsburgh game where Pittsburgh, they got the ball, they got to go 75 yards, and they got two minutes to do it in. And on the very first play, the ball gets tipped, gets intercepted, and then they end up losing the game because they don't get the ball back until 17 seconds are left. And then they still got 75 yards to go. And then the Buffalo game. Okay. The Buffalo game, they had a group a goal line stand, a goal line stand. Buffalo got the ball at the one yard line and they know they need to get the ball off the goal line they hand the ball off and it's fumbled and San Francisco recovers and San Francisco scores after that. And so those are, that's one play in three different games that didn't, it doesn't define the team because in Buffalo's case, they had enough time that they can get something done about it. And so they go win the game. Pittsburgh, they didn't have enough time, all right, to get anything done about it. And then their undefeated record is no longer standing. All right. We didn't get into the end zone to win that game, but that doesn't define the team. And so that's what I'm telling them. And I'm telling them we're still capable of having a good last quarter of the season. And then we just got to have to go and continue to play with that will to win that they displayed in the last game. Aaron Reese. Hey Romeo, since John Grenard has played more after putting Brendan on IR, what, what sort of progress have you seen in John as you've gotten more of an extended look at him in recent weeks? Well, I think that the game experience that he's gotten has helped him a lot because he knows now, uh, how guys are going to try to block him, how they're going to try to attack him, and then how he needs to play those blocks and how he needs to do his responsibility. You know, he, he's kid has some strength, uh, good size, and, and he's a, a, a steady player, you know, and that's, I think that he'll continue to get better, you know, through the rest of the season. Aaron Wilson. Uh, just to follow up on Chad, would you expect to elevate him again based on the way he played? Probably, yes, probably. Gotcha. And with the, <clears throat> the ability of, uh, you know, as you said, to move on from a mistake, did you have a conversation with Nick? And, uh, you know, we haven't heard from Nick. Just kind of where, where is Nick at after after this? Obviously, everyone feels bad when they make a mistake. But just uh, what was it like, you know, just kind of where? Oh, you mean at? Nick Martin? Nick Martin, yes, sir. Thanks. I tell him the same thing that we just talked about as far as the team. One play doesn't define a player. I mean, you know, that game was, I think it was 68 offensive plays and, and boom, all of those snaps were pretty good. And then the one there at the end was a little low or we couldn't handle it and we lose the game. All right. I expect him to come to work, do the best job he can at work and then have a good game against the bears. John. Romeo, uh, much has been made in Chicago about the Bears passing up Watson and Mahomes. And, of course, it is this week, too. What do you think it would mean to Trubisky if he could beat you guys, considering all he's heard about is Watson, Watson, Watson? Well, I'm, I'm sure in, in his mind and for his situation, whoever the quarterback he that's playing 
again in a game that he wins, he's gonna feel good about it. All right. Now he might feel better because of all the hype, but I mean these football players that we deal with, they understand what the hype is about and all of that. And and I think that what they're gonna try to do is they're gonna try to go play the best game they can play. Uh, and he's going to try to give them the best chance to win that he can. And that's what we're going to do. And that's why games are, are pretty good in the NFL, because on any given Sunday, you know, you never can tell what's going to happen. What do you think about the way Trubisky's played since he's uh, replaced Foles? You know what? I think he's got some good talent. Uh, he's got good arm strength. Uh, and, and you know, sometimes things work out for the better. Uh, and they haven't done that for the team. And I think sometimes the way the team goes can impact the way a guy plays. Uh, but I expect that their best game is going to be, they're going to put their best foot forward to try to play their best game. And and we have to do the same thing. Aaron Reese. Hey, Romeo, why do you think uh, David Johnson hasn't really been as effective as a receiver this year compared to past seasons in his career? Uh, I'd have to look at the numbers to see what the numbers say, how many balls have been thrown at him, you know, how many targets he has, how many catches that he has from those targets, uh, what kind of run after catch he has. I mean, and I haven't done that, so I'd have to do that before I could answer that question for you. Everybody good? Okay, thanks, Coach.